Bart, you had a couple over there up on the one rock and they kind of slipped by us, didn't they? <laughs> Carl, what do you have here? Well, we're here in Seven Mile Creek and uh, we're looking for the habitat of the National Crayfish. And we found a spot here where there's a lot of slab rock, a lot of loose rock. And that's good cover. So we're going to turn some of these rocks over and see if we can catch a few. All right. Got a bunch of stone rollers craw crawling around here, too. <laughs> there he is. There he is. That's That's one we're looking now he's for. got lots of different colors. To it. Mm -hmm. Let's get a close up of him right there. Carl, he's got a lot of. He's got a lot of green and orange and well, he's got this green saddle here and then there's another saddle up here. And his abdomen has a lot of red and Yeah, he does have a lot of red on the, the tail. tail. Mm -hmm. His uh antenna's kind of reddish orange. That's right. And uh, the the claws the Kayla have uh, really long fingers. And there's a dark stripe down the lateral margin here. Sure this is a male, and these are the, the gonopods right here, and this is how you can identify the, the Nashville crayfish from all other species of crayfish. Well, I'll be. Now that is a Nashville crayfish, and mm -hmm. it's only found here. That's uh, right. It only, this only occurs in the Mill Creek watershed. In the Mill Creek watershed. In uh, Davidson and Williamson, Williamson counties. Now is that just, is that an average size, typical? This is pretty average, they get bigger and they can be smaller, but that's a pretty typical size right there. Now what does he feed on? I mean he... Well most crayfish are omnivores, so they'll eat just about anything that's available. Mm -hmm. But uh, probably most of the time they eat algae, they scrape algae from rocks. They also uh, are uh, scavengers and so if there's a a dead fish or something like that in a the stream, they'll take care of that and help clean the stream up. Well, I can't help but notice the, the, the bait that we're using is chicken. And uh, so they will come to chicken yeah. and anything like that that they can feed on, right? They will, yeah. Uh, raw chicken makes excellent crayfish bait. Mm. All right, Carl, you got another one there. What 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 is this one? This is the uh, Orconectes duroli, the common name for saddle crayfish. Let's get a good and, uh, close up of okay. them. And you can see this dark saddle that starts here and comes all the way around the thorax. Sort of horseshoe shape. Yeah. Well, he uh, is, he's like got stripes down the side. Mm hmm. This uh, white cream colored stripe is useful to identify it. Now, is he a real common this, type crayfish? This is a common species in Middle Tennessee. It's uh, in the Highland Rim and Nashville Basin and pretty much all of Middle Tennessee. And in the Cumberland River, these aren't nearly as brilliant as the ones in the duck. The ones in the duck are just much more brilliant colored. Why, why is that so? I mean, the duck being clearer water or, or more aquatic vegetation in yeah. there? Well, that's a good question. That, you know, most of those streams in the duck are uh, Seem to be more clear, have more gravel substrate, and it may be a, a camo, camouflage type mm -hmm. technique mm -hmm. that they have. 
Now this one has a, a big claw and a small claw. Yeah, this is the this is an original claw that has grown normally throughout its lifespan. But this one here, at one time, probably during a fight with another crayfish, lost this whole arm here, this whole leg. And it and crayfish have the ability to regrow those legs. Oh, regenerate really? Them. Yeah. But when they come back, they don't look the same morphologically. They're a little bit deformed, but they're still functional. Yeah. And that is probably just about as typical. Now, will you find this one in East Tennessee or West Tennessee, or is it just this, primarily here in Middle? Just Middle Tennessee. Just, just Middle Tennessee. Yeah. Carl, you, you, you and Bart said something a few minutes ago, and I'd like to touch on that. These, a lot of these streams are protected. You can't necessarily take the crawfish out of them. Um, you can't fish with them. Uh, the one that we saw, the Nashville crayfish, it is listed on the endangered. It, the Nashville crayfish is the only federally endangered crayfish species that we have in the state. Now Carl, what you got here? We've got a, a little trap set for a burrowing crayfish. We found a, a chimney here yesterday where a uh, burrowing crayfish been active. Okay. And so we uh, opened it up, put a little pipe trap in, and left it overnight. So we're going to see, we said about 10 traps last night, so we're going to see what we got today. All right, let's see what the call. Okay, we what do you got here now? This is the ambiguous crayfish, Camberra striatus. That's a female, and she's actually got one egg on her right there. You see that? That's an egg? Yeah. That is awesome. Now, their pinchers are a lot smaller. Yeah. They're, they're not as long. They're not, their fingers are short, and the palms are wider. And Better for digging? Better for digging, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Typically in a stream like we have here, where we have a lot of limestone is the, is the underlying geology. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes good habitat for snails, so they use that. To, to so these the snails that's on this bottom of this rock, is that is that sign of a healthy stream? or? Yeah, that's a, that's a good sign. This is a little snub-nosed darter. Snub-nosed darter. Mm -hmm. I think I can go catch me some more fish now. <laughs> <All right. laughs>